In Africa, iron craft is a widespread tradition, more than 3,000 years old. The making of iron has always been intricately involved in the practice of agriculture and the making of weapons. At the core of numerous rituals, it has been slowly abandoned with the advent of European scrap metal. Iron reduction was still being carried out 30 years ago following an ancestral tradition. One of the last smeltings was recorded in the Dogon region around 1967. A number of craftsmen are still alive today. 13 master smelters, aged between 50 and 99, agreed to perform a last iron reduction for the sake of posterity. They are all descendants of the Tonmo clan's blacksmiths who came to Mande with the Dogon people during the 17th century. All belong to the Jeme Yalan clan. The Mande people dispersed more than five centuries ago when the Empire of Mali broke up. The Dogon say that their ancestors crossed the river Niger on a crocodile's back and reached the cliffs of Bandiagara where they settled. Crocodiles have been sacred ever since. The Dogon believe that in them they see the effigy of the oldest man known by their people. <laughs> The opening of the mine is always consecrated by the earth priest. It is he who is responsible for the rituals and has the power to entrust the earth to the miners so that they can extract ore. The consecrated mine is on the site of Dingi, the oldest in the region, where the ore is very rich in iron. To placate the spirits, the earth priest has had a ram's throat slit. The sacrifice is made at a distance because the ore, in a bon, is red. Hence, anything red, such as meat or blood, is forbidden in the mine. Red arouses the ore's anger, and it sinks into the ground and disappears. Ore was mined from January to March. Mining ended the day the rays of the sun reached the bottom of the pit. The making of iron could then begin. A furnace must be chosen. The site for the furnace is very close to Aridingi, an ancient village almost completely deserted today. This particular site is the oldest in the region. Nestled on the plateau, which stretches beyond the cliffs, it is a two-hour walk uphill from the mines. Piles of slag are the sole remains of thousands of iron smeltings. Furnaces in ruin stand in a network of alleys and esplanades. It is here, among the furnaces of Aridingi, that the old master smelters have made their choice. <laughs> This furnace is the oldest on the site. It was founded more than 200 years ago by Anle Bele Togo, or the left-handed, because he held his hammer with his left hand. It has not been used since 1961 because young men have been loath to do such hard work, and the recuperated tubab, or white man's iron, had already begun to invade the marketplace. Until then, 13 furnaces were still in use. After the ritual formulae, the blacksmiths clean the site, clear the arches for the tweers, and set aside lumps of slag, which they will use to construct the new furnace. Mm. 
Meanwhile, the shaft is being sunk. The depth of a mine depends on the site. Here in Dingi, they are 10 to 20 meters deep. The blacksmiths are still clearing the old furnace, recuperating blocks of slag and pieces of clay. Out of respect for their ancestors, a furnace's base is never dismantled, for the founder's soul lies within. Only the upper part is reconstructed. When a master smelter died, it was his successor's task to renovate the furnace. Amatiege remembers every ring recalls one of the six Togo masters. The clay which is to be used to remold the new furnace comes from a clay deposit buried in a narrow valley 800 meters from the site. It is dry now. Normally, clay accumulates over the rainy season. Water is drawn from a well in Aridingi, very close to the site. The vases used to store and transport the water are in finely decorated terracotta. Their manufacture is reserved for the blacksmith's wives. The clay is mixed with the water and left to soak. One may not enter the mine with objects of red copper, nor may one bite into a kola nut, for its juice is red. A woman may not venture within the perimeter of the mine, for she may have had her period or have given herself to a man, or can bear neither blood nor stains, thus women are not allowed on the site. He who woos a girl already promised to one of his kin 
is forbidden to enter the mine. Neither does he who has just coupled with a woman, for he is soiled. Were he to do so, the mine may collapse.